Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Dateline Downtown Podcast. This is your host, Juan Hernandez, here today with a very special guest, another cl- very close friend of mine for many, many years, Yesenia Aguilar. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Yesenia, you're currently a student here at UHD. You're about to graduate class of 2014, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, just briefly before we get into it, all stuff related to UHD. Just tell us, tell the listeners out there a bit of, about your background, where you, kind of like where you come from, and what led you to to UHD. Okay, so I was born in Mexico, and I started school here in the United States when I was six years old. What My, part of Mexico did you? Where were you born in? Cancun. Cancun. Wow. Yes. Here's a nice place. Uh, I wouldn't know because I didn't live there for oh, okay. that never long, there? but um, yes, I've heard it's very pretty. Haven't had the chance to go back, but someday I might go back. Awesome. So, born in Cancun, um, trying, to, trying to retrace my steps here. Born in Cancun, moved to the United States. Yes. When uh, you were, how old were you when you moved? I was six, so I started school here in the United States when I was six years old. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I went to Briscoe Elementary School, from then on to Edison Middle School. I come from Eastwood Academy, that was a charter school. Mm-hmm. From there, I applied to some universities, which included the University of Houston downtown. Mm-hmm. Although it was not my first choice, and I have to admit, I did apply for U of H first and then UHD. I don't regret my decision to come to UHD. It has been a great school and has provided me with many opportunities. Wow, interesting. And I think that's actually, we actually met. We really never actually hung out, but I've known you since uh, elementary. Yes, all yeah. All through middle school and I think the cutoff point was high school. And then back here at UHD. That's right. So we always kind of went back and forth. Yeah, back and forth, but we still kept in touch. We did. What What interested you about first um, about U of H Maine that Maine? made you want to apply there aside from UHD? Okay, so my first choice as a major, I wanted to go into mechanical engineering, mm-hmm. and U of H has a great engineering program. So that was that was one of the reasons why I wanted to go there. But then I wasn't so sure I did want to go into engineering. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do my basics here at UHD. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, well, I'm going to transfer. That didn't happen. Mm. I applied for the criminal justice program here at the university. And um, like I said, I don't regret it. It's a really good program. And I am am a criminal justice major with a minor in psychology. So that's what I'm going to graduate with this fall. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. What was it about the criminal justice system that kind of that interested you the most? Was it just a program overall or did you already have an interest before? I did not have an interest before. I remember just uh, being a little bit lost, Mm -hmm. like most freshmen, I would say. Um, get into my sophomore year right away because I came in with college credits from high school. Yeah. So the counselors here let me know, hey, you need to uh, declare a major. So then I actually started looking into what do I want to major in? And I took a look at the criminal justice program and I said, well, this is for me. This is like I love working with people, helping out. And I was like, this is this is my calling. This is the right field for me. And did you, uh, I'm a criminal justice major myself as well. And did you like doing the the police ride-alongs and the going to court and stuff like that, going to the correctional facilities? Yes, I've actually had an, uh, we've actually had the chance to do all of those things, which is really cool. You kind of get to see Mm -hmm. what's out there in the field, Um, some experience. I really did enjoy going to the courts um, you get to see all these cases, mm-hmm. and hey, that's very interesting. And are you able to, once you're out there, are you able to apply what you've learned at here at school? 
out in the field or does it take time? Well, okay, so that's a hard one. I think that you pick up a lot of things from mm -hmm. a university, um, discipline that you can apply out there in the field. Mm -hmm. But I think that the, your experience would come with actual, with you actually being involved as an officer or wherever it is that you plan on, on going. It's just like any other job. You learn from the ones that are there already and you probably, a book might not be able to teach you some of the skills that you need. Mm. Wow. Um, going back to the whole having to experience all these type of things like going to court and stuff like that. What type of work experience do you have? Okay, so before I was a student, a student worker here at the university, mm -hmm. before I had got this job, um, I actually worked for a law firm, an uh, immigration mm. law firm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's some of the experience I've had uh -huh. with the system itself. So there's a lot of things that you have to get involved. Like officers have their own paperwork, but so do lawyers, right? Yeah. So that just, it just depends on which side you're looking at. Still, you have to apply everything that, the law to whatever you're doing, so. Would you ever go back to work in there? At a law firm? Yes. I think so. See, one of my plans after graduation is either to apply and go to law school or just pursue my psychology minor and all of that, mm -hmm. kind of yeah. build on t from that. What was it like? Um, did you work there for long for at the law firm? Yes, yeah, about a year. Oh, about a year? Oh, okay. What did you... What did you, what was the thing that you learned that you came out after you left saying that okay I learned what am I trying to say here what was the thing that that um I guess what stuck the most yeah what me? stuck the most to you after after you left it's kind of like saying I'm able to apply this. Well, I'm able to Some, apply a lot of things, actually. So you learn about immigration forms. I mean, immigration is a big topic out there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. When applying for things, you just have to know the forms by memory, um, fees you have to pay to USCIS. So all of that I know how to do. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just... So it would be great for me to go to law school. Like, my parents actually want me to go to law school because I still remember all of the forms and it's just something that kind of got drilled into me after mm -hmm. a year you, you just pick up on the number you, all you have to do is say oh this form is number blah 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 blah, mm -hmm. and that's something that sticks with you things will change in immigration but the forms they're only tweaked a little bit and mm -hmm. it's applied to everyone whether you're uh, trying to fix your legal status or just trying to renew your residency so you have any thoughts on the current state of immigration? We've had several several guests before talk on the subject and given us very valuable information and it's still a relevant topic today and I think it will still be a relevant topic maybe for a couple more years to come, who knows. But based on what you've what you've heard on on the news lately, what what are what are your thoughts on that? On that end, on immigration. Yeah, on the well, whole, on the whole immigration reform and what Obama did. You mean yeah. lately? Uh -huh. Well, okay, so that it's gonna benefit a lot mm -hmm. of people. And congrats to everyone that is going to be able to apply for that and be able to work without having to be worried about their status or mm -hmm. what a company might do if they find out they don't have the legal status. So um, I think from that end, that's good for them, right? But yeah. we still have a lot to go and to grow in the immigration topic, I would say. I think that this is some type of solution, but like I said, there's a lot of ground that needs to be touched, a lot of people that need to be, mm -hmm. um, I would say, benefited from it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were not but it's a step closer to something. And I think we, we uh, everyone who looks into the, the news should say, hey, at least from that end, 
I appreciate that we're moving forward. Mm -hmm. And it takes time too, because personally, uh, I went through it myself be um, from my parents. Yeah. Back in, they got here in 1990, and it took them up until 1996 to start working on it, on becoming residents. And it took them about five years, so it does take a long time. That's right. You can't expect a change to happen mm -hmm. in a matter of months. It takes time. It takes patience, I would say. And it takes a lot of money, too. And it takes a lot of money. That's right. It's, uh, we're, I'm not going to go into the specifics on how much, but it is a lot of money. I'm sure people out there know that. <laughs> yeah, even the people that have to apply next year or that will be benefited from what Obama mm -hmm. did, they still have fees to pay. Um, a lot of things that will come in come into play in the whole process. It's not just, hey, I'm going to apply. I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. it's, do you have the money? Do you have what they're asking for? Mm -hmm. Are and you clean yeah, from your and, record? And like you were saying, it's not all people are going to qualify, so they shouldn't be getting mad over, over anything like this. I mean, they are doing, they are doing this for, to help people, but of course some people are not going to qualify because they're either, they have a criminal record, which automatically disqualifies you from anything either way, or yeah. you just don't have the money to do it. Or, you know, there's a, my dad was telling me the other day, they, sh they give you like a whole list of, of requirements that you need for eligibility like if you have this you can apply for this if you have this you can apply for this it's just a lot of things that's right and like i've said i've worked at a law firm before i've mm -hmm. taken a look at these things so you have to meet the requirements you mm -hmm. have to do things in a certain way you can't just say hey i'm gonna i apply i came here or i have a son daughter who is a resident or a citizen i'm gonna be um mm -hmm. benefited from this yeah you can be I'm not saying you won't be, but you need to have everything in order, I would say. Yeah, and that's, that's the most important thing. A, a lot of people, I feel, that are misinformed out there. And, again, based on, we talked about this before, on how the news media portrays and delivers all the information. People just have to be well-informed and well-educated on the subject, whether it's immigration, whether it's, when it comes to cases like the Ferguson case, um, it, you just have to be yeah. well informed. Right. You want to avoid avoid being biased. So you can't just say, I know this because I saw it in the news. Mm -hmm. Build on your knowledge. What are some of the organizations that you've been involved in here at UHD? <laughs> Okay, to be quite honest, uh, when I came in, I got into the photography club, mm -hmm. but I never really, I, I would say I would, I can, I was not dedicated to that. Honestly, I'm just going to say it out there. I no, was not dedicated to that. Put it out that. there. <laughs> <laughs> but my last semester here, my last year, I did get into the Professional Society of Criminal Justice Students, and I'm actually one of the officers, so... I can say that it is something I should have probably done a long time ago, maybe this, since I came in. Is this something that I probably should be doing as well? Yes. As a CJ major? Yes. I think as a criminal justice major, it just the society provides you with, uh, with possibilities to meet people who are mm -hmm. actually in the force already. Mm -hmm. So we do network with criminal justice agencies. And they do come in uh, every time we have a meeting to speak to us. Mm -hmm. And, hey, if they're recruiting, th then you are able to apply. They're able to help you. You will go up to them and say, hey, help me apply for this. They'll give you tips on that. Mm -hmm. They'll even become, they can even become your recruiter. So that is something I would say for criminal justice majors or for anyone interested in that field, mm -hmm. that they should join societies like the one I'm in. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just saying it because I'm in it. It's actually a very good society. No, you can say that. I could, I could <laughs> say that, but... <laughs> and it's ag agencies like the Houston Police Department, Sheriff's Department. 
Yes, that's right. Like that. So just the whole criminal justice, whoever works in there, if they were mm-hmm. if they're working in the courts, they don't really have to be an officer to come and speak to us. They're in the field, and everyone builds on the criminal justice system from anyone that works from in a court to an officer. Do you have any future plans rego- after graduation? And looking ahead, I know it might be a little... I don't know if you're that type of person that that kind of has their career set, like their future set, but maybe like in the next five to ten years. That's a hard one. You know, I feel like back in high school when they asked me, hey, so what are you going to do after high school? It's a scary thing, um, a scary and a good thing. I am really excited to be graduating, but from that comes the nervousness of, oh, what am I going to do with this? Mm-hmm. Um, where do I go from it? My plans as of right now are to just keep going with my uh, with my studies. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually going to start working here at the University of Houston downtown as staff. And from there, I plan on pursuing my master's degree. Mm-hmm. I think I'm either... Like I said, either I'm going to go to law school or I will pursue my master's in counseling at the University of Houston. So, yeah, I might be a cougar next fall, but I would not. I I still, in my heart, I'm still a Gator, so go Gators. Cool. Uh, Let's not. Let's not not bring them into the play. (laughs) Yeah. And. Don't misunderstand what she said. She did say uni- U of H Cougar, not like uh <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Moving forward to to law school, do you have any plans as to what you want to do with that in terms of, I guess, after graduating law school or after graduating, what was the other one that you mentioned? A counseling, mas- counseling. master's in counseling. That's right. That's, That's right. right. So it's kind of like, so you kind of have a couple of options. I do. Going into graduation. I, I do just because I know that some of my professors feel that I, I should do this. Mm-hmm. And some of the librarians even say, hey, go for your master's degree. That's actually, that's awesome. More power to you. Mm-hmm. But I still don't know what I really want it on. So like I said, I might go to law school. Mm-hmm might pursue that master's in counseling or go into forensic psychology from there um, probably pursue that um, phd that's really my ultimate goal i would say Mm -hmm. but as of now the goal i have in front of me is get the master's degree first worry about that later it seems like you have a lot of really really good plans for the future for yourself and did you ever looking back did you ever think that you were going to be doing all all of this like oh no the whole way. law school and graduation graduating from college yeah. i mean graduating from college that's kind of i mean i knew right away for, for a very long time that i was gonna go and i was gonna graduate i just didn't know on what <laughs> okay so i think yeah that's the main thing you, yeah. we never really know on what it's mm-hmm. just like oh man what am i gonna do what am i good at what am i not good at i guess mm-hmm. Um, but no, no way. I didn't. I, I don't think I ever saw myself doing all of these things. Um, just because statistically, I remember in high school they would say, so they lined us up and there was like 10 of us. And I think, I don't know which professional came in and he said, you know, take a look at around you. Take a look at the person next to you. Three out of you 10 will make it into college and actually graduate. The rest might not. So it's, I think it still applies that not everyone gets their bachelor's degree, mm-hmm. but um, I, I'm glad that I was, that I'm one of them. Mm-hmm. But I think that, that people are too quick to judge. Right away they're, they say, oh, you dropped out because of this, or you dropped out because of that. Not necessarily the case. I mean, everybody has different, oh, yeah. has I, a different I, story. Yeah. You know, somebody might've dropped out because they 
just couldn't pay for school. Someone else could have dropped out because they had a baby, had two babies, however many babies. I agree with you. Or many people just drop out because they just don't like it. Like I said, I don't think school is for everyone. If you can make your money doing something else, mm-hmm. you can earn just as much as someone with a with a degree. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying don't go for school. Like I said, more power to you if you actually yeah. uh, finish. It builds discipline and all of those things. And it shows that you can start something and finish it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like you said, other factors come into play. But the number's still there of... I, I think at yeah. the end of the day, it's like, hey, this is the number of people that actually have a bachelor's degree. I know a couple of friends who who didn't choose to continue beyond high school and are very successful. Yeah. And not to say that everybody becomes successful if they don't go, go to school. Go to school. But, you know, you just never know. I mean, it just depends on, I guess it just depends on whatever you're doing. There's certain professions where you really don't have to go to school for that. And I don't know if luck has anything to do with that, too, or circumstance, maybe, circumstances, maybe. But, you know, I, something interesting that a juvenile probation officer told me back in June when I was doing my internship, he said that we... We as minorities, you know, Hispanic, African Americans, we, we, we need that paper. We need to go to. We need an education because otherwise, we're gonna be left behind. Yeah. We're gonna. He asked me, "What would you be doing if?" And what about a, a woman? You know, like that also. Especially. Yeah. So I think you, we should keep that in mind. And he asked me, "What well, What do you think you'd be doing if you weren't doing this?" I'm like, "Well." I'd probably be doing construction or some other type of labor work. I don't know. That's true. I don't know, especially for women, like you said. And but a lot of women nowadays are they're they're getting up there. They're getting high, high, way up in in the rankings. Yeah. In terms of medical field or the criminal justice field, like yourself, and and we we need that. We really need that. Of course you need that. Yes, we do. We're smart individuals. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we really do need that because you hear a lot of people say, well, I want to become an entertainer or I want to become an artist. Nothing wrong with that. But not everybody makes it. That's the reality. Not everybody makes it out there in the entertainment world or in the art world. It's just very hard, especially now in 2014 with all these all these jobs. I know they're... They keep adding jobs, and the unemployment rate rate keeps going up, keeps going down. But we still need engineers. We still need do- need doctors. We need mechanics. We need all the stuff that makes that makes the world run. That's right. Criminal justice. That Whether too, we that, like it or not, we still always, need our officers. Yes, there's always a high demand in, in this field that we're in. I would in. think so. Yes. So, I mean, you can say, you know, oh, cops this, cops are, the criminal justice system is broken. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure there's room for improvement. There's always room for improvement in anything. But at the end of the day, if something goes down, uh, wife's getting beat up, you need assistance, what do we say? Hey, call the cops. Call the cops. So... I know our, our previous listeners for our previous episodes, we've talked about the Ferguson case, and I'm not sure if we talked about the whole NFL scandals, but it's not like I want to beat around the bush and keep, you know, talking about it, but it's still a relevant topic even as we're speaking today. What are your... What are your thoughts on the whole Ferguson case, th- how everything went down and the aftermath? Okay, so honestly, I've read a few articles on this, and it's just, uh, I will have to say it's an unfortunate event. It's something that we don't like to hear in the news, but 
the aftermath, I don't think that things should have went down that way. But then that's just my personal opinion. Yeah. As in everyone and the riots that happened. Um, there are ways of making your voice count, making your ar own argument against what you think count without mm -hmm. having to resort to violence. Like a professor uh, mentioned, um, you know, some of those people over there in, in Ferguson who were doing all this scandal, they're not even from there. They're, it's just people who love to bring things up and and start things. Mm -hmm. Acting out on pure emotion. That's right. Instead of looking at the facts and the evidence. You have to look at both sides. And even if you don't agree or if mm -hmm. you agree with with the final decision, then there's still there has to be a better way to approach a situation than mm -hmm. than how I think it was handled by some. And I always I always mention to the listeners that in cases like this and like the Zimmerman case, we we really don't know what actually happened. That's right. And you we don't. we will never know what happened because we were never there. So for me to say yeah, I show my support for Michael Brown or I show my support for the officer, you know, it's I wasn't really there. You know, you can't be you can't be too you can't take it too personally and you can't get too emotionally invested in it because it doesn't affect you in any way unless something like that has happened to you before. I mean, it I mean, I wouldn't say it doesn't affect us in any way because it's still like you and I are criminal justice majors. Right, right. It if if you get in it, it's going to oh, yeah, it affects definitely. the agency. Um but the media, mm -hmm. uh, once again, I'm oh, not yeah. saying don't look at the news. Mm -hmm. For all, By all means, look at the news. But mm -hmm. don't base your information just of just from what you read or from mm -hmm. what you see on, on TV. Because I, I think that they're going to show you whatever they want to show you. And some of, that, some of the information was misleading when before, before the verdict was given, saying that, Michael Brown was shot in the back and that to give the impression that he was killed because he was he didn't want to get off the street well that that wasn't the case they presented the evidence stating what what happened I'm not gonna go over what happened I mean I'm sure everybody knows by now and you know it's a case where the way I look we look at it as criminal justice majors I mean you can't go, you can't go head to head with a police officer like that. You just can't, because. And I mean, that's a good point that you bring up. Um, we both know about racial profiling. Yeah. From criminal justice, we can say, hey, demographics, right? Some regions are just, are just uh, the population. It, it will be more African Americans, so you will see more African Americans mm -hmm. getting stopped. Just because that's the that's the majority in mm -hmm. that certain area, and not only African Americans but Hispanics too. I Hispanics mean, it, it happens as well. All that's the right. Time. It just depends on where yeah. you're living, but also, <coughs> you know, from the psychology side, there's research that says, of course, there's racial profiling. Yeah, we do have evidence that that does exist. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just things to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not that I want to be repeating the case over and over again but I mean it we keep hearing about new cases coming out of police officers in these situations and it's 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 really a shame to to see people the way people react saying that they're gonna protest when in reality you're they're just you know burning down businesses and breaking into stores and stuff like that that's not that's not a form of protest you're just looting <laughs> your own place where they you live yes you understand that they they are that breaking help. down where they live or like i said some of those people they don't care because they don't live there no and if you're placing yourself as as the victim then you're not helping matters in the end because you're not moving forward and i mean i just wanted to hear your your thoughts on the whole case and i think there's another case that just went out 
yesterday. I think it was Eric Gardner, Eric Gardner case where he was uh, again an African American, and I'm sure everybody saw the video where he was. I'm not sure if you saw it, where he was being choked by the police, by a police officer, and he died right after. And a lot of people, again, under the impression that he he died because he was choked by the officer. But... What really went down, right? Yeah, he had already had a, a lot of medical, a lot of medical problems. So that didn't really help. And the officer did not choke him to death. I mean, the evidence is there. He didn't choke him to death. He let him go. He was choking him at first when he took him down. But I mean, what are you gonna do when you're resist when you're resisting arrest? Is the police officer just gonna stand there and say, "Okay, just wait here until we can resolve something"? If they're telling you to put your hands behind your back, just put your hands behind your back. I mean, that's all you gotta do. <laughs> Again, not uh, the people that do get arrested are not. Like, I'm not going to say they're not the the most intellectual people out yeah. there, right? Uh-huh. So if you were to be arrested, Juan, I'm sure you would try to cooperate, right? Of course. I mean, I don't want to get pepper sprayed. I don't want to get hit with a baton or even tasered or even shot. But that's why we cannot expect everyone to to react yeah. like an intellectual or exactly. to analyze the situation and say, hey, I'm just going to give myself up. Uh, mm. These people don't. They're not looking for that. I mean, come on. No. If you're breaking the law, then you will that be tells pun- me you will be punished. And if you don't cooperate, I mean, things are only going to go south from there. And I'm not saying other. I mean, I'm not saying there's not things that need to be changed in our criminal justice mm-hmm. system. There is, but we cannot just be judging. Yeah, and at the end of the day, uh, people shouldn't get the wrong impression from the police, from the police force. You know, police are there to serve and protect. And, you know, there's always going to be bad apples. Um, a professor always t- told us before, there's always going to be bad apples within the system, whether it's criminal justice or, or in the medical or field. any field, that's right. Any there's field. always going to be people that are going to abuse the system. And, you know, it's, that's just that's just the reality. And you just got to watch out for those bad apples, if you can. And, you know, at the end of the day, people don't get the wrong impression about the police. They're, they're there to help. And if you need them, they're always going to be there no matter what. And, you know, just like our military, they're out there 24-7, you know. Mm-hmm. That's right. Fighting to protect us. And... If we were not, if we didn't didn't have that, then we'd be out there shooting each other, killing ourselves. <laughs> you know, if a dispute goes down, and you know, saying, "Hey, Yesenia, I'm not happy with this," blah blah blah, and you know, start hitting each other, and that's just not how things work. <laughs> you know, we don't live. We live in Western society. You know, that's not how we resolve things. But you know, here. the good thing about this is that we're talking about it we're probably going to end up in the field ourselves Mm -hmm. and this is why we we need to develop um from from that yeah and and there's always going to be people maybe listeners out there that are not going to agree with what we're talking about but that's fine you know that's the whole point of this that's right just to have a conversation you know i'm willing to have a conversation with anybody that supports you know if you support michael brown all the way then Hey, no problem with that. I'm willing to have a conversation with you. If you support the officer, um, Officer Wilson, hey, I'm all for that too. You know, I'm willing to have a conversation. And, you know, I'll look at it from both sides. Yeah, we're not here to criticize. It's it's just, let me hear your point and here's mine. Maybe a couple years ago, I might have been a bit more biased about things. But as we go along through college and as we've learned... You know, you can't be biased, especially in this field. That's right. We cannot do that. 
and hopefully we are uh, among the few that are not the bad apples. <laughs> that's that's the idea, and that's why we pursue a higher education. And by all means, the more knowledge you have, the better. Before we wrap up, do you have any any advice for people out there, students, not just interested in criminal justice, but I guess overall and I guess coming to UHD or maybe anywhere else they would want to go? Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. So I would say that if you're already here, whether you're just getting your core and you plan on leaving or whatever it is that you plan on doing, um, always join something, uh, a society, a fraternity, sorority. Believe me, it builds discipline. You get to meet people and you do not want to end up the last semester of your college years saying, what did I do? I didn't join anything and I have nothing to put on a resume or I just, I didn't develop any friendships. Mm -hmm. I just didn't network. You want to network. Believe me, if anything's gonna get you a job after college, it's your networking. Mm -hmm. It's um, any degree, just any degree, networking. If you know the right person, you are more likely to get a job than someone who went by their years just taking classes and um, trying to get out of school. Mm. It's not a race. I mean, if you can finish faster, go ahead. But don't forget that you need to develop those connections as well. And if you're planning on pursuing a higher education, like master's degree, PhDs, you still need um, to get along with your professors. You need the, those recommendation letters. Mm -hmm. So it's all those things to keep in mind. It's not about just saying, hey, I'm going to go to college. I'm going to get my 120 hours and leave. No. And the resources are all there. They're always there. It's, it's just a matter of seeking Looking them out. Them. That's right. Yeah. But if you don't talk to anyone, if you are just very much into yourself and doing your own thing, then more than likely you will miss it or you will not be that informed. And I'm not saying you can't look for it by yourself. Yes, you can, but it takes a certain person to uh, stand up and look for things. Mm -hmm. saying it's been a very, really good pleasure having you here to talk about you <laughs> <laughs> and all things UHD and just anything else that we have talked about in the in the last few minutes or so. And you know, I'm really, I'm really proud to call you a friend and to see you come this far. I've known you for maybe more, more than 10 years now, on and off. Yes. You know, it, sounds like, it sounds like a bad relationship, on and off. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that, we've, that you've gone this far and we've gotten to reconnect once again here at UHD. And I look forward to hearing from you again in the near future, maybe in the next month or so <laughs> after well, graduation it's been a pleasure to be here talking to you and you know we're always going to be good friends you never oh, know where sure. i'm going to end up and maybe i'll be hiring you juan or maybe you'll be hiring me you never know so just it's something to keep in mind build those friendships like i said well when when that happens uh, be sure <laughs> be sure to hire me you know when you, we're you. when we're both bosses we won't be like the movie horrible bosses Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we're not that. <laughs> and again, for all the listeners out there, you know where to go. You know where to find all the information. Facebook, Twitter, the podcast page. Face It's Dateline Downtown Instagram. on Facebook. We don't have an Instagram yet, which we probably should. Yes, you should get an Instagram. Because you can put video and photos up there. It's very interesting. Um, if we do end up getting an Instagram, you know where we got it from. You know where we got <laughs> the idea from. See, there you go. I did have plans to put it out there, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But DatelineDowntown.com is the official website. You can find the Facebook page there. The Twitter handle, as always, at the Dateline. Make sure to follow us. 
the podcast page, datelinedowntown.com slash podcast, and our YouTube page, Dateline Downtown, where you, you will be able to find future podcast episodes as well on our YouTube page, which is much more convenient, where you have the audio and the visual element. So, Yesenia, thanks again for joining us. And no problem. I hope to talk to you again in the near future. No, thank you. And go Gator.